Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. Hope you're having a great day wherever and whenever you're watching this. And we're continuing our look at Matthew, and especially in the section of the Sermon on the Mount with uh, Jesus teaching here. And I'm excited about this section because this section specifically gets into some of the the practical ways that we live out our faith and some of the practical instructions that Jesus has for our day-to-day living and how we navigate that. So sections, or rather uh, chapters six and seven really dig into the practicality of living out our faith on a daily basis. And Jesus specifically starts by looking at the topic of hypocrisy. And this is something that is very frequently thrown at uh, us Jesus followers of as accusations from the outside of saying, hey, you believe and you say one thing, but you do another, which is a dangerous accusation and one that we fully should receive if we're living that way, because God has not called us to live one way when we're at church and around church people and another way on our private time, but to live consistently in every way. And so Jesus speaks out on three areas of hypocrisy in the areas of giving, prayer and fasting, these three things that we should be doing on a regular basis, but gives us some instructions to do them in a healthy way. So let's take a look. Matthew chapter six, starting in verse one, he says, prepare, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Your Father who sees in secret will reward you. See, Jesus says that this is the the danger of practicing our generosity, something that we think would be great at all times, is that we would do it for the wrong reasons that we would do it so that people would look at us and go, man, they're so generous. Look at how kind they are. Look at how great they are. And I think this is a danger that is even amplified by our social media culture that we find ourselves in, where we're uh, almost encouraged to post about everything from what we had for lunch to the driver in the parking lot that annoyed us. And we take a picture and post it in orchids and onions to everything, even our acts of generosity towards others. And so I thought about how we live this out, how we live as people who are generous without seeking the praise and affirmation of people. I thought about a story, Uh, and maybe you know the background of this story, but I thought about the man who was the secret Santa for 28 years in Kansas City. Now this man, every Christmas, would dress up as Santa and walk the streets of downtown Kansas City handing out $100 bills. Now, he wasn't secret in the sense of no one knew he was there, but he was secret in the sense that he would never reveal his identity. For 28 years, he did this anonymously, despite uh, local newspapers and television studios following him around, interviewing him, asking questions. He would never reveal who he was or anything about his background until he began to die of terminal cancer in 2006, and then he began to tell the story. And the story actually began back in 1971 in Mississippi when the man who was Secret Santa, whose name is Larry Stewart, was homeless, unemployed, and desperate. And he wandered his way into a diner, desperate to get some food. And his plan was to order some food, to eat quickly, and slip out, hoping no one would notice him, because he had no means to pay for his meal that night. But the owner of the diner kind of sensed what was likely to happen, and seeking to be generous without Uh, drawing attention to himself or even bringing shame on Larry Stewart, snuck up behind him with a $20 bill in his hand and said, sir, I I think you dropped this behind you. He gave it to Larry to give him an opportunity to pay and to be responsible for his meal that night. And Larry vowed that night, if he ever had the opportunity to become wealthy, that he would pay it back in spades. And through cable and long distance revenue, he did just that. And so every Christmas he would dress up as Santa and hand out $100 bills on the streets. And on his deathbed, he told his best friend his only regret was not helping more people. Over a million dollars, and his regret was that he couldn't help more. And for 28 years, he stayed anonymous. And I think that God smiled at that. I don't know if Larry was a believer. I don't know where where faith intersected his story. 
But I think he exemplified what it means to live generously without seeking our own fame. And sure, he became famous. Here we are uh, on the other side of the country talking about him. But he did it for the right reasons. Not because of his generosity, but because of the heart of saying, I just want to help people. And I don't want any credit. I don't want any fame or notoriety for it. I just want to bless people out of generosity. So I hope that you seek to uh, live that out in your own life to bless and give to people who are in need, to be generous, to give out of what God has blessed you with, not so that people can clap and congratulate you and praise you for your generosity, but so that you can be generous because God has a heart of generosity. I think he smiles in every act of generosity, no matter how big or small, as long as we're doing it with the right reasons, to love people and to live for him, not to get the approval of people. So I hope that you do that well this week. Have a great day.